now that I think about it, it's kind of crazy that I've been following a diet ever since I started bodybuilding when I was 14, 15 years old. I've always been super strict with my eating regimen. And up until now, I've never met one person as disciplined as myself. So when I see these vegans, carnivores claiming to be on their diet, I know they're cheating, they're deviating, whatever it may be. I've always prided myself in being honest and transparent, but does it really mean much when everyone on social media lies? When you only have to pop in front of a camera or take a quick Instagram post? You know, people aren't seeing what you're doing with most of your personal life. How many times has a vegan been caught eating fish? How many times have those vegans admitted to eating fish months prior to their no longer vegan videos? That being said, I guess I'm the first ex-carnivore, at least someone that's actually followed the diet strictly for a long period of time. And the reason for that could be that all of these other carnivores, just like vegans, are making money because of their carnivore personality. And, you know, those carnivore celebrities are known for liking a little bit more than just a steak at the pub, but they try to maintain the illusion that they chow down solely on good old Angus Prime beef. Ooh -wee. Hopefully this is the last video I have to bring up any of the negativity associated with the cornivores, conivores, clownivores, baldivores, whatever you may call them. I started the carnivore diet back in 2012, coinciding with my health journey. You know, I had severely damaged digestion from Accutane, and although I didn't attribute it to Accutane at the time, I thought it was because I was eating so much food with the bodybuilding, I was literally Googling how to be healthy. You know, I came across several books, and after reading those, I started with a base diet from my understanding of that literature. And then over the course of three, four years, I developed my own dietary ideas through experiments and further research. You know, four years of following a carnivore type diet, four years of researching before I was even comfortable putting myself in front of a camera to share my dietary information. I did feel much better eating only animal foods. My digestion improved. I had consistent energy levels. It definitely took that experimenting with macronutrients, food cooking temperatures to get things right, but I felt like I developed a template that would work for anyone. And guys, that experimenting I did was a bit of an understatement. I was fortunate enough to know that grass-fed, high quality was important when I started the diet. However, you know, there were times where I almost had rabbit starvation. I wasn't sure what I was doing starting off. Uh, but at that time when I started, I came across various carnivore diet forums, zero carb communities. The diet that existed many years ago in the pure form of eating just meat, whether it be beef, pork, or chicken. But the point was to consume zero carbohydrates. So a lot of the carnivore foods that people are eating now even like heavy cream or liver wouldn't have been allowed because they technically had carbohydrates. Uh, so despite my diet being carnivore, at the time the interpretation of the carnivore diet was actually a zero carb diet. It was very different. And since I felt like I was following an animal-based keto diet or a paleo keto diet, like true paleo, I felt like my diet didn't really have any categorization and when I did decide to start YouTube in 2016, I didn't identify with any of those dietary communities. I was just kind of doing my own thing. And over the first two years of my YouTube channel, you know, my message was loosely about eating animal foods, nutrient density. But when the carnivore diet showed up on the Joe Rogan podcast in December of 2017 in the form of corn faker, you know, I figured it might be a good opportunity to explain to the carnivore community, you know, the importance of organ meats, nutrient density, macronutrient ratios, you know, it's more than just eating meat, but I was largely ignored, you know, so much to the point that I was upset 
and I ended up deleting all my YouTube videos back in June 2018. Of course that was a mistake and I still deeply regret deleting all of that content because you know you can't remember everything, you can't recreate everything, the hundreds of hours that went into making the videos as well as the thousands of hours of additional research. But you know at that point in 2018 when I kept doing YouTube I did strive to recreate as much of that content as possible and I, I think I've done that. I think I've added forms of that updated information with better production quality and of course it paid off. You know, I was able to sort of squeeze my way into the carnivore diet space, you know, despite never really considering my dietary habits to be that version of the carnivore diet, you know, eat meat, drink water. And because I did that, my channel grew with the influx of people wanting to try the carnivore diet. You know, I went from just a few thousand subscribers to dozens of thousands. And after you know, a couple more years of beating nutrient density and macronutrient ratios into the carnivore community, it still hasn't really stuck. They're just telling people to eat more meat. And it's very obviously a cult, very obviously special interest funded at this point to just sell feedlot meat. But at least some of the ideas I'm talking about are still being recognized as a type of carnivore diet. You know, so I feel I contributed to it somewhat and you know, despite most of my ideas being stolen to sell products, you, know, you do have people talking about that improved grass-fed meat quality, organ meats, even mentioning things like vitamin D3 and digestive enzymes. With that growth, with that ability of me to share my ideas with a larger platform did come negativity uh, in the form of vegans that I was speaking out against as well as carnivores because I expose their special interest funding. And I mean, that would have never happened if that clown never copied and plagiarized my information because the only reason I started looking into the special interest funding was because it didn't make sense that they were defending someone that was plagiarizing someone else. You know, it was just a weird spot for me to be in. I was basically following a diet before it was truly established on social media. So I had all of this information to share, to establish myself as a leader, whereas normally the leaders would just be propped up shills that had connections. And that's still largely the case in any industry. It's just unheard of for an outsider like myself to sneak in without being part of the club. You know, imagine in the context of the vegan community, you know, someone like Medical Medium comes along with his celery juice madness and everyone starts chugging down celery juice in the morning, but they don't mention his name. You know, that's kind of like what would happen to me. Except what I brought the carnivore community would be like medical medium discovering blenders or inventing the blender, something revolutionary for vegans, and then they don't give me credit for inventing the blender. That negativity and those horrible interactions with the carnivore community, you know, manifested itself in a way against my health. You know, the reason I'm saying I was carnivore for seven years despite me being at the eight year mark right now is that my health has been so poor at times in these past two years that I couldn't even adhere to the diet without getting incredibly sick. And I suffered for a long time, guys. You know, when I came back after auditioning for MasterChef all the way back in early 2018, you know, I was never the same. I took so much Tylenol and Advil on that show out there because I wasn't sleeping. You know, I damaged my liver and then it couldn't handle the carnivore diet anymore, all of the iron. I had insomnia, heart palpitations, poor sleep up until now basically. And things have been getting better uh, since I discovered what my issue was earlier this year. Uh, basically liver dysfunction from a heavily imbalanced diet. And those initial symptoms of histamine intolerance, severe, severe gut autoimmune reactions, uh, when ignored, lead to your liver becoming damaged. And I've done several videos explaining iron overload, how to prevent it on a carnivore diet. But at this point, in order to reverse the problem, I simply need to eat plant foods, carbohydrates, starches, sugars, glucose, fructose, fiber, insoluble, soluble, all play important roles in digestive health that might have prevented the issue from happening in the first place. That 
and those plant foods contain minerals that are lacking from most animal foods in proper ratios. To loosely summarize what I've been doing the past few months, I tried sticking to carnivore with the honey glucose on and off, but just felt much better with the increased gut motility from higher volume plant foods. Uh, most recently, uh, in the past month, I've switched gears to consuming a large amount of my caloric energy from carbohydrates like potatoes, pasta, some fruit. I still eat a ton of meat, over two pounds in the form of grass-fed beef. It's just that my energy intake has shifted from animal fat more to plant foods. And I am a little worried about sharing my new diet, talking about specific foods, and I really don't want to explain why I'm eating certain foods, largely because of the fear of the plagiarism that's been going on with my channel in the form of all these other carnivores, especially one in particular, you know, who knows if they're gonna start doing the same exact stuff as me, or they'll even get some other clown shill to pop up out of the woodwork following my new diet. Very possible, very likely. You know, there's always money to be made. You know, someone's gonna pop up with a whole food sponsorship after I eat potatoes, talking about how good potatoes are for you. And I would really like to do a video this week highlighting the foods I've been eating, as well as a whiteboard video explaining the downsides of the carnivore diet, specifically why I stopped. But again, I'm kind of reluctant as it would basically give the template for all of these other carnivores, baldivores, carnivores, whatever the hell you want to call them, these grifting clowns to jump ship along with me. Whereas in reality, these carnivores probably never actually went a day without sucking down a mug of coffee and they were deviating from their diet because, you know, why am I the only carnivore, you know, social media personality that has had these health issues? I've had dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people email me, clients that I've helped correct issues they've developed from a carnivore diet, but for some reason, these influencers aren't having the issue. And if they've truly been following a carnivore diet for years and years and years, they would have already developed severe, severe nutrient imbalances that would have destroyed their health. Uh, so since I have always promoted certain plant foods, you know, the same can't be said of these other carnivores. You know, you would think they would receive a lot of backlash. So maybe they will stick to being carnivore, almost in like a no longer vegan sort of fashion. Although I can't imagine the carnivore followers being as dogmatic. You know, I have videos of me making sourdough bread two years ago, intermittently, at least every month or two, I talk about plant foods. But, you know, since I really do set the stage for everything carnivore, especially on YouTube, you know, I suspect a lot of people to just grift off of whatever I do without any actual understanding about why I'm doing it as they have for the past few years. But since I don't have dozens of videos of my new diet on my channel, they won't have anything to go on. So I think we're good for at least a few months, boys. And, and I don't really care, honestly, if you know, people are going to copy me over and over again. It's so blatantly obvious. I don't think they're going to ever really get anywhere with it. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, you can go to frank com to see everything. Frankie's Strange Meat, Frankie's Naturals. Uh, reach out to me for consultations. My book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet. You know, if you guys do want to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat as we continue to provide you guys with high quality animal foods. And of course, if you guys could drop a like on the video, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. But as always, I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.